Um, John has yeah, this tin yeah, box, yeah. and we've been putting what our Thanksgiving that would be wishes, nice. and we yeah. read the ones from the prior year. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. What do you call it? <laughs> um, is it seven? I don't know. The Thanksgiving wish or box, and we all take the sheet of paper and write it down. And okay. Like, okay. okay. Are we on? Yeah, we are on. Done by the time are we gonna, you know, like yeah. projects you're working on? Or, I think we have just a few more. Yeah. That's cool. Just waiting for seven on my iPad, and then we'll start. Moving to executive session? <laughs> no. <laughs> Second. There you go. We're oh We're in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I need the votes. <laughs> All right, all, it's 7 o'clock. Good evening wow. and welcome to the November 19th Town Council meeting. Councillor Spinella, would you lead us in the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Dolores, would you please take attendance? Sure. Councilor Breton? Here. Councilor Forrest? Here. Councilor Hurley? Here. Councilor Latina? Here. Councilor Lesser? Here. Councilor Rell? Here. Councilor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Martino? Here. And Mayor Morin Bello? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have no hearings tonight, so we will move right into general comments. Members of the public have five minutes to speak. Please state your name and address. Is there any member from the public who'd like to speak tonight? Come on up, Mr. Hickey. Thank you, uh, good evening, my name is Joe Hickey. I live at 28 Meadowview Drive in town. I'd like, I have a few uh, brief comments to make on the Keisha Farm refer referendum. Speaking as a long-time state land use planner, and also having had about 50 years' experience involvement in town affairs, I feel the acquisition of this farm is in the best long-term interest of the town. Once it's bought, what's the next step? I think the next thing is going to have to be that you're going to have, it will require consideration of a great many uh, issues of, of use and, and management. Issues and concerns, and I'll list about five possibilities which somebody's going to, going to have to face. One is the basic issue of land preservation. A second is one of the recreation potential of, of the site. Another is the possible, uh, is possible uh, farmland preservation and even the restoration of an active farming operation on at least part, part, part of it. I think fiscal impact, one way or, or, or the other, is a factor that you people are going to have to weigh. Some of the studies you've already heard about four or five or ten times saying that, uh, that recreational housing does not pay its own way in terms of services. There's also the, the fiscal impact if you do certain kinds of development on the, on the site. Uh, and lastly, what could be the possible impact on the neighborhood of certain kinds of use? That, that, that has to be weighed. Now, on a personal note, because my sons and grandsons were all active in town youth sports leagues, I have to be honest in, in saying that I have publicly spoken in favor of increased uh, ball field uh, opportunity in, in town, in quite possibly within the, the Keisha Farm property. At the same time, I am very disappointed in the statement, public statement, that, that representatives of the sports groups uh, made in the local paper, especially where they were threatening not to support the referendum if they didn't get what they wanted. Now, th that unfortunate, that inf the unfortunate tone, I think, could easily turn off allies and potential allies, and perhaps turn them into ad adversaries. After all, uh, action begets reaction. I would advise them that, that, that political success usually involves developing and maintaining alliances, not in uh, get, getting into a, uh, uh, a fight with people. However, the referendum did, did pass, and I hope sincerely that we can all work together in a civilized manner to decide 
what the best use or uses of the property should be, and giving it all points of view their, their proper heed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Colantonio, come on up. I'll speak, I guess. Uh, good evening, Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Ah, uh, guess what? I'm still gonna talk about my stop sign. It's been about 10 years now. I've told you many things. And I don't know if you don't care, or you're incompetent, or whatever it is, but I've told you many things. And one of the, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize that Morrison Avenue was never meant to connect to Silas Dean. And as such, as different zoning regulations between Morrison Avenue and Hillcrest. Nobody cares. I even asked the engineering department, says, you know, what's, uh, what's the setback, the frontage setback for my house? Oh, in that zone, everybody has 40. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, okay. Now, keep in mind that in 1955, most of the houses in, on Morrison Avenue were built. The only houses that were not built was basically east of Tifton on the north side of Morrison Avenue. And they have a bigger uh, frontage. Now, not just the frontage. The existing right of way on Morrison Avenue is 50 feet wide. The existing right of way on Hillcrest is 80 feet wide. You wonder why. Have anybody has ever asked why? Has anybody ever asked that before 1955 there was no right of way to connect Morrison Avenue to Silas Dean? But yes, to this moment, there is still a right of way from Tifton to Church. Does anybody have asked the question why? I don't think so. I don't think so. As such, before the, the 55 construction or the completion of uh, Morrison Avenue connected to Silas Dean, how the traffic used to be on Hillcrest. Since then, we have twice as many cars crossing or on Morrison Avenue than on Hillcrest. Have you ever asked yourself why? Do you really care why? It's been 10 years almost. I have to say that you don't care. There are 30, 40, 50 kids that cross Morrison Avenue on a daily basis when they go to middle school, I guess, Silas Dean. And right now they cross as the, as the worst possible place or the, the least safe place on Morrison Avenue, which is right across Tifton. Does anybody care? No. I don't think so. It's, it's, it's just amazing. It is, it is amazing. I've been paying taxes and taxes and taxes every year. Every year goes up and nothing gets done. Regarding the quiche, I just want to say something that, yes, I guess it got passed. But I, I believe 45% of the people said no. And the question that I have, it got passed because it's really the best thing for Wethersfield? Or is they got passed because a lot of people don't really know what we're doing. I mean, let's face it. As the gentleman talked, we don't really know what's going to happen to that land. The fact still remains that right now it's going to cost me $16 more a year. And that's not counting the taxes that that place could have generated for everybody in Wellsfield. So I guess, you know, 45, 55, is it really, uh, you know, a super majority? It's a majority, but I don't know. But anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. <clears throat> Excuse me, is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Come on up, Mr. Mazzarella. Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. <clears throat> I guess tonight's agenda, 
the uh, Tremco roof maintenance contract is, uh, I don't know if you call it renewal because it's a continual thing, but it's coming up anyways. You're going to vote on it. Uh, and I, I, I would hope you could maybe discuss a little bit about what that contract actually covers. Uh, I, from what I knew of it, I understood that they were monitoring all the town-owned roofs. Uh, they did an initial survey. They keep track of all the repairs and maintenance. They do minor field repairs when needed, um, minor patches and fixing little odds and ends, um, and then also help uh, source contractors if there's a major repair. So <clears throat> keeping that in mind, I was looking at the uh, Board of Ed facilities condition assessment report that was presented a couple weeks ago by Colliers, specifically about the roofs. And <clears throat> they called out in their report that all the elementary schools, all five schools, need roof replacement and a significant cost, of course, with that. Uh, they cited some ponding water, cracked and crazing skylights, uh, gutters that were not working, that were overflowing down the side of the building, um, ballast that was missing on the roof so that the uh, roof, roof itself was exposed to the weather. <clears throat> so I'm wondering if, if this is something new or has this been in the Tremco reports that are provided to the town so that the town would have known about this. I think we're maybe in year eight of that Tremco program. Have they been saying all along that we need to replace the roofs and nobody's paying attention to that? Or are they not doing their job? Or does Collier's not know what they're talking about? So I'd hope you could maybe elaborate on that a little bit tonight. And I also wanted to mention uh, the Keisha Farm vote. So a little over 5,000 people voted against it. And I came up with 37% of the registered voters voted for it. So it's clearly not a mandate. I think you should be very cautious how we proceed. Uh, I'm very disappointed that the town and town council elected to release one appraisal under the Freedom of Information, the appraisal that basically supported the offer that was made and failed to release a second appraisal that the town paid for that was significantly lower than the agreed upon price. And I think if the majority of the town folks, the voters, had heard about that, had realized that we were overpaying, they would have voted differently. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Young, come on up. Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. I too noticed the, uh, oh, what's it called? Temco, Temco roof contract in the agenda for what, $61,000? And, um, and I also noticed the articles in the paper regarding the Board of Education and uh, the study that was done uh, regarding enrollment in the aging buildings. And I really wonder if this is a duplication of work as far as, as them, that's Malone and McBroom, uh, reviewing the buildings versus Temco. Uh, it, to me, it seems like there's some duplication there, and maybe you should be reducing some of this fee if you're going to continue with Temco, because uh, it's already been done. And they said the roofs were poor. So I would hope that you would go back and look at that before you make a decision. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about the 
referendum. Question number three. And I'd like to also thank those 5,284 voters who went to the polls on November 6th and voted no on the Keisha Farm referendum, question number three. I believe these voters were either Democrats, Republicans, and or unaffiliated voters who make up their own choices on how to vote based on their own personal analysis and good common sense. The 6,651 voters who went to the polls and voted yes on the Keisha Farm referendum. What happened to Hickey? This was for him. I, be I believe we're, uh, we're, okay, I'll start over again on that one. The 6,651 voters who went to the polls and voted yes on the Keisha Farm referendum, question number three. I believe that we're our town officials, all of you, who support this proposal, and beginning with, as well as the insiders and your surrogates, who in some cases held meetings and spoke at meetings supporting the yes position, and the remaining uninformed voters who normally and unwittingly vote as instructed by their party directives. As a member of the public who tries to attend all or at least most of the town council meetings and did attend the public hearing on the Keisha farm, I could not understand or justify the need to prematurely rush this proposal to the voters. The town, council, the town officials had not perform their due diligence by providing a defined plan for the property. Oh, it could be open space. Oh, it could be playing fields. Oh, it could be government use. That doesn't say much. Nor did they provide evidence that the 2.4 million was a fair and reasonable price for the property. Where is the appraisal that the town paid for? I asked for that and I'm, totally, I'm told I can't have it as well as they failed to identify and determine future costs and methods of payments, more bonding, more leases, and or taking it directly from annual revenues, except bonding for the purchase. For whatever the property will end up being, our town officials failed to provide considerable information that would give a voter a comfortable feeling on how to vote. On September 10th, following the town council hearing of the Keisha farm, I sent the interim town manager, Ms. Bagley, an FOI for all and any appraisals the town had on the Keisha farm. The manager sent me a copy of the seller's appraisal valued at $2.3 million, and the valuation date was June 30th, 2014. That was, eight, that was four years old. The manager stated that under FOI they had they, they are not required to provide the appraisal until the property is sold, terminated, or abandoned. That effort. The town could have released. The, the town could have released the tax, to the taxpayer, the town could have released their taxpayer funded appraisal to the public. Give it to me. Put it on your website. Why do we have a website? It's to put things like that up there. If you'd finish up, And sir, to communicate with the public up. to show their $2.4 million price is supported by the opinion of a professional land appraiser, and they chose not to do so. I Thank wonder you, what the town Young. officials fear will be revealed once the appraisal is made public. And it will be made public. It Correct, will be. Mayor? Thank you, Mr. Young. I'll be back. Okay. Is there anybody else in the public who'd like to speak? Anybody else? Good evening. My name is Rick Noor. I live at 308 Knott Street, and I am employed by the Dis Disabled American Veterans of Connecticut. I understand that there was a Veterans Committee formed. Uh, there is a 
Veterans Parade Committee and a Memorial Day Committee in which veterans serve on that, on both of those. I was wondering why none of these veterans were approached to serve on that committee. And if any of your people that are on that committee are active duty people, retired people, or disabled American veterans, because I feel that they would know the needs better than just people that you picked. So if somebody can give me that answer, I would appreciate it. Okay, we'll look, uh, we'll look into it. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Okay, seeing none, we will move into council reports. Do any council members have reports to give this evening? Councillor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, last week I attended the Human Rights Commission's meeting. Uh, in the meeting, the group is just getting organized, getting going. The meeting was centered around coming up with goals for the group and for 2019, as well as uh, picking, uh, trying to pick a chair, and they settled on co-chairs. But it was just a discussion on the different things the Human Rights Committee uh, could do. Um, it was a rather quick meeting, but as the goals are developed and they are going to do some events, there will be more to report on. But that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Any other council reports? Deputy Mayor? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I attended the Senior Citizens Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, they're in the process of preparing their spring program that they put out in, in normally in May of each year. This year they got a speaker that's going to come in to talk about giving a decluttering presentation, something a lot of seniors who are looking to downsize would probably be coming to to figure out how to do that. And it sounds like that's going to be a good program. They come up with something good every year to look at. Also, EDIC met. We got an update on all the properties and spent time going over uh, next month the salute to business that will be held. And they've got a lot of good uh, long-term uh, companies in town that they will be honoring at that. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, let's move into council comments. Any council members have comments tonight? Councilor Rell? Oh, okay. Matt had his hand up first. Councilor Forrest? <laughs> Thanks, Councilor Rell. Uh, just a, a comment uh, about the, some of the roads in Old Weathersfield in particular. Um, I was happy to see that they were going to redoing the gar Garden Street essentially because of that, that paving job was clearly a little bit wavy, might be a nice way to put it. But um, uh, after talking to some other people and also just experiencing myself, that Main Street paving job is also a little bit to be desired, especially and more specifically where the manhole covers and the various utilities need to pop up, whether it's access to water or sewer. Those gaps are many inches deep, and any sort of regular car going over them will eventually, especially if you live in Old Weathersfield, sort of throw out their um, their alignment, et cetera. So if we could sort of look in to see what, uh, if that paving job was done in sort of a proper manner and if any re repairs and or uh, appropriate measures can be taken to handle the, essentially, there are now potholes where the where those locations are. It's not a pothole in particular, but it acts like a pothole in any car. Um, I'm just sort of voicing some of the uh, thoughts by some of the m members of our Old Weathersfield group. Thank you. Are there other council, oh, Councilor Rell? Um, a couple months ago, uh, a gentleman who lives on Longview had come in with a petition drive regarding the uh, speed limit and I guess some of the uh, uh, concerns he had with uh, accidents that, that had been occurring. Just checking in to see if the town has done anything with that, um, either with the petitions, with the police department, or with engineering. And I know, I think Kathy, you and I had a conversation about a month ago or so. Um, just any kind of follow up on that at all? But, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I do have uh, our engineering department is looking into it and is looking to see they need to do a survey out there and determine uh, sight lines out there also. So that is in the works. It just hasn't happened yet. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. I have two quick things. One, I wanted to thank Deputy Mayor Martino for last week leading the Veterans Day ceremony. Did a did a great job, and it was a terrific ceremony. We have some folks 
in the audience who were there. So excellent job. And um, all those who attended, I think, uh, thought it was a great service and a great tribute. The second thing is I wanted to mention that I, and I'm sure many others have, have gotten these too, have gotten a lot of inquiries from people in town and concern in town about the number of car break-ins and car thefts. And um, this is a serious issue, not just in Wethersfield, but across Greater Hartford, maybe across Connecticut, but certainly across Greater Hartford. And as someone who doesn't always lock his car door in the driveway, uh, that, and someone that should, uh, we all should do that. We should all take extra precautions. It's a big issue in terms of public safety in our town. And I uh, mentioned also to, to our interim manager that maybe we can get the uh, police chief here to give us at a future meeting another update on what the police is doing. I know they put some posts on social media, but um, this keeps coming up as, a, as an issue uh, for residents. And I think there's a lot of concern in town. So I think we have to do all we can um, as a town government to uh, try and curtail these uh, car break-ins. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other council comments? Deputy Mayor? Uh, first of all, uh, can't thank you for your comments, but it wasn't just me. It was a team effort. There was a committee involved, the whole group, including two who were in the audience who helped out on that. Uh, Mr. Newell and Mr. Clinch out there, they were all involved as well as others. I especially want to thank our park and rec staff, especially Sal Kucha, who did a lot of the legwork on putting this thing together. I mean, and this year, you, like you said, we had a lot more people there, and we had a dynamic speaker in Sean Connolly, which uh, really helped too. So uh, it, it was a good day. Uh, I also just want to note that uh, since we last met, we had one uh, ribbon cutting in town. It was at uh, Labyrinth Escape down on the Silestine Highway. It's a new building. Our new business in town, a uh, couple started this thing. It's got rooms. Uh, one is set up like a jail, another set up like a uh, Egyptian tomb, and a couple ones like a, a, a dungeon and a few other things. And you go into this thing as a group, and you have to figure out how to get out of it as a group and work together to do it. It's great at team, team building. Uh, they've got different ones across the country from different groups, but this is a local uh, resident that you know put this business together in town and uh, uh, I guess different organizations go there for team building and it's uh, I'm hoping that they succeed in town and uh, Maybe also the council should go <laughs> <laughs> team building and the last thing I had was uh, since the last meeting we've had chambers had one business after hours that was held at that bookstore we had people show up uh, uh, people who were there had a good time and uh, at the same night, a uh, bunch of people bought some books, which helped the new owner there as well. Thank you. Are there other council comments? <coughs> okay, I have, I have a little list here. I'd like to start by thanking Sophie Riley. She is a nine-year-old from Wethersfield. She sent me a letter asking that the council consider raising the smoking age to 21 instead of 18, and she says she cites that Hartford's done this and that it'll help keep um, kids from smoking. So thank you for that letter, and we will take that into consideration. Um, I too would like to thank the Veterans Day Committee for their work. Uh, I was happy to take part in that ceremony. It was um, an honor to be part of, of that with all the veterans in town. Um, I'd like to thank the residents for their donations to the food bank for the Thanksgiving drive. It was a successful drive again this year. Um, I, I enjoyed attending the Therapeutic Rex Thanksgiving dinner. There were more than 80 members of the community at that um, Thanksgiving dinner last week. Uh, a reminder that this Friday is Christmas on Honeysuckle Lane, the movie that was, what's that? Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Saturday. Excuse Saturday. me. Yes. That's great. Give out bad information. Mayor, in I know. Give out bad information. <laughs> this Saturday at 9 um, on the Hallmark Movies and Mysteries channel, the Historical Society will have a showing as well at 9, um, where the proud recipients of a $100,000 grant from the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. Um, we look, I look forward to hearing more information about that and how that will come to the town and possible uses for that money. Um, I'll give you a, a save the date for those in the um, for those watching and in the public. December 18th at 6:30 p.m. there will be a public meet and greet 
for town manager finalist candidates. So um, at that time, we'll be bringing in between three and five candidates for the town manager position. They'll be here for a day or day and a half. And part of their visit to town will be a 6.30 to 8 meet and greet with members of the public. It'll be at the Keeney Cultural Center. Um, and finally, I, um, I was very upset to see, again, a large increase by the MDC. I would like to ask the town manager to draft a letter um, expressing, um, I hope not just my displeasure, but everybody up here, all nine council members, if I have your permission, um, to ask the town manager to send a letter to the MDC um, telling them that we are displeased and outraged over another enormous increase. Um, I'd also like to ask that the MDC come to our next meeting as well as our commissioners so we can speak to them personally. And that ends my long list of comments. Thank you. Um, next, we will move on to the town manager's report. Um, I have no report. Fantastic. Town clerk, do you have any communications? No, the election went fairly well. Very good. Thank you. Uh, next, we move into appointments to boards and commissions. Uh, appointments to the Veterans Commission, Karen Opper, 100 Goodwin Park Road, 11 to 6 20 She was just a, she was a former U.S. Army combat medic. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Are there any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Okay, do I have some more appointments? Yes, Mayor. I have some appointments to the Veterans Commission as well. First, Jennifer Alger, 128 Highland Street, 1119.18 to 630.20. Ryan Biggs, 24 McMullen Street, 1119.18 to 630.20. Dan Camilleri, 148 Ox Yoke Drive, 1119.18 to 630.20. Doug Shipman, 30, excuse me, 381 Hartford Avenue, 1119.18 to 630.20. Helen Sweeney Nye, 48 Old Post Road, 1119.18 to 630.20. And do I have a second? Second. Okay, are there any comments or questions? Just maybe we can answer the gentleman's question on um, if they were veterans or okay. who they are. Miss um, Alger is the wife of, um, do you know what he served in? No, I just know okay. he's a veteran. He's a veteran. Mr. Um, Biggs, I believe, is active duty. Dan Camilleri is a veteran. Doug Shipman is a veteran. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Helen Nye works for the Veterans Commission. Rock you. Rocky Hill Veterans Home. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, any other comments? I'll just say we plan to work with both the Memorial Day Committee and the uh, Veterans Committee. We can talk offline, sir, about how we can best work together. As you, and perhaps you and I can meet offline sometime. And there is one more. Um, I believe there is one vacancy on that commission as it stands now. Am I correct? Correct. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, the vehicle lift is remaining on the table. Uh, the next is the appointment of the town council members to the executive search committee. Do I have a motion? Motion to appoint the town council to be the members of the executive search committee for the town manager recruitment. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Kathy? This action is necessary for the council to meet as a group and to take any action on uh, this personnel matter. So it, it needs a vote of council to actually become the executive search committee. Okay, are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. The next motion is the Tremco Roof Maintenance Program. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve year three of five for the roofing maintenance program with weatherproofing technologies and company 
are incorporated for $61,500. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Kathy? As, um, as council may be aware, the Tremco Care Service Agreement is a uh, previously adopted five-year agreement adopted by council. We're now going into th year three of five, so it is a renewal for that. The company does provide work at, um, as um, earlier mentioned by one of the residents who spoke, that it does, they do an inspection of all the town roofs. They identify any issues with them, and then they, talk, they work with staff to determine uh, is this a, a small enough repair that they will do in-house with their staff or if they found a bigger problem and we need to look outside to get an outside contractor for that. Um, they've uh, been very successful with us in all our town buildings. I'm not sure about the school roofs and I, I will have to check that. I thought it was all town buildings. It was included in this so that I do need to double check that because he does uh, bring up a good point about... Um, what are some of the things that they saw? We haven't, it's been a year since we inspected, so they could have found little things that have happened over the year, and we can get their report and match it up against the Tremco report and make sure all of that is covered in this next inspection. Thank you. Are there any questions, Deputy Mayor? Uh, just to add on to what Kathy said, uh, the Tremco group, the schools are included in that. They inspect those roofs as well and do the minor repairs to those as well. And, uh, inform staff of what they're going to do and what has to be done. I haven't had a chance yet to read that facility study that came out from the Board of Ed. I will. Uh, if it's a duplication, I'm not sure. I don't know what the tasking was that the Board had given on that, but I will look into that. But uh, I would think if there's any changes to, you know, what one group said versus the other, I'll, I'll look at that. But Tremco has been very good over the past few years, uh, even before we had single contracts with them to uh, keep on top of stuff and keep it going and they have a, a database where they track the rooks and project when they need to be replaced. Uh, so I'll be interesting to compare Tremco's versus the uh, McBroom study and I, I know they're very qualified people on the uh, Tremco staff that are doing that. I haven't reviewed who the others are on the other group. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments? Council it looked like, thank you, it looked like in the contract that we were allowed to see that data report, but we needed to get a specific web address and a password. Do you have that? I don't have it with me, but I could get that out to the council members. Okay, that'd be helpful. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. We have a police grant. Do I have a motion? Uh, yes, Mo uh, move to authorize the town manager to apply for and accept a state grant from the Office of Policy and, and Management for the 2019 local grant program <clears throat> for the police department in an amount of up to $10,000. Thank you, do I have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second, Kathy. This grant comes up through the state um, every year and the police department does uh, apply for it. We've been successful in past years and the police have used this money um, as it was stated to do um, improvements both to outfit the cruisers with computer equipment, the motor, mobile data terminals and the license plate readers and that's what they're looking to do with the grant this, go this year. Thank you, are there any comments or questions? Okay, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Um, next motion, the meeting minutes of October 15th. We have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, are there any changes, corrections? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. I believe that is the end of council business. So we will move back into public comment. Are there any members of the public who'd like to speak? Mr. Colantonio, come on down. 
Why is that what I was thinking? <laughs> Good evening again. Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Who was here? Not you. <laughs> You're smaller than me. Uh, Mr. Early had a question regarding the <coughs> long view drive, I guess, <coughs> speeding and whatnot. And, uh, and the town manager promised that uh, engineering is going to take some sight distance, intersectional sight distance. Guess what? A few years ago, I had the same problems. And they took the intersectional side distance on Hillcrest and, and Orchard, find no problem at all. They went on Morrison Avenue and Orchard, looking, looking uh, east, I guess, you know, there was substandard intersectional side distance. That's why we have a stop sign in the easterly direction. There is no problem from Orchard looking west. You can see almost all the way to Walker Hill. Uh, when it comes to Tifton and Morrison Avenue, though, there is a problem. Before the construction, there was no problem at all. Intersection side distance was enough for 25 miles per hour. After the construction and moving the road toward the south, now there is a problem. Second time, the town took the intersection side distance at that intersection, and when you look in the westbound, you can only see 232 feet. 232 feet is not enough for 25 miles per hour. It's not enough for 24 miles per hour. The speed, the posted speed on Morrison Avenue, it's 25. So there is something wrong there, and nothing is got done. The 85th percentile, it's, it's, I believe it's 30, 33 or 35 miles per hour. We're just waiting for something to happen. Okay, and that's unacceptable. Two or three months ago, I requested a, a, a meeting with the town manager, the, the engineering department, and, uh, and the police department. And since then, like, you know, I, I thank the town manager because we met and we talked about a few things, but uh, what I had in mind, engineering terms or, you know, safety and this, that, I never really got an answer, and uh, she was going to talk uh, to the engineering and the police. Now it's been, like, you know, two or three months. I still would like to meet with the town, town manager, the police, and the engineering. I would like to know what their excuses. The only reason that I have, or excuse I call it, that there are, you know, that the reason why we don't have a stop sign at Morrison Avenue is because we have too many stop signs in Wethersfield. Yes, I do agree. But in many places, we don't need the stop signs. And when we do need a stop sign, nothing gets done. So. I don't know. Am I going to give up? No. Are you going to kick me out of town? No. I cannot do that as long as I pay the taxes. So I'm not going to go away, but I would like to talk with somebody who can really. And I have to appreciate it. You know, Ral and uh, Lesser, they, they, they came, you know, about a month ago, and they agreed there is a problem there. You know, how long does it take? How long does it take to do something? And if, if you are not going to do anything, can I get an answer at least? Says, listen, Gus, you know, we looked at it. You know, we talked with the police department and they say it's okay. Well, it's okay. Let's put the numbers together, you know. I get they can tell anybody around here. But I've been in engineering for 37 years. And when we talk about, you know, the way, <laughs> the way the public, I guess, you know, public works behaves, forget it. The more I get in touch with them, the less I respect them. But... You know, the idea now, and I guess Matthew Roberts, right, or Forrest, you're right. Do you ask, your, you, no, do you, do you ask yourself why these paving jobs, they are not perfect? Is anybody looking after them? Yeah, there are the manholes, you know, all over the place. Every time they do a good job or a job or re, uh, overlay, you have to go all over the place to eliminate, you know, going over those manholes. Because when you go over those potholes or manholes, they, they are, you know, eventually they take a toll on the car and you have to bring it in and it costs more. Why don't they do the job the right way the first time? Why do they have to come out and fix it? On Morrison Avenue, simple job. They had to come and widen the road. They had to put additional pavement. They had to remove the existing pavement behind the curbing. There wasn't a plan. Why didn't they do it? And they did not do it correctly because... 
The plans call for removal of existing pavement and they only removed bituminous. That's not pavement. Payment consists of bituminous, base, and sub-base. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Mr. Mazzarella, come on up. Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. So <clears throat> I noticed in No Weathers Field in the Village District, I believe it's referred to, uh, a lot of the... Uh, Brick pavers are being reset, uh, which is nice. There were some uneven sidewalks there, and that's finally getting addressed. My question has to do with how that's being paid for and how it's being shared with the rest of the residents in town. From what I understand, that whole section of uh, the village district was uh, changed to pavers maybe 10, 15 years ago, I don't know. And I think it was done under a federal grant. Most of those properties are private residential properties or privately owned commercial properties. Yet they got all their sidewalks replaced for free. So I have a lot of sidewalks in front of my house that could use some work. And I don't see any town contractors or town employees going around the rest of the town fixing damaged sidewalks. And I don't think that's fair. I think uh, we should come up with a program where sidewalks are maintained by the town. They're on town property. Most are on town property. Uh, property owners are responsible for removing the snow by statute. Um, we're responsible for maintaining them when they need to be f fixed. I believe we have to use the town approved contractor and pay them directly. Maybe $200 a slab, $250, I'm not sure what the going rate is. Seems to me, with all the taxes with, that we pay, um, I now have to pay to have the snow removed, I have to pay to maintain the sidewalks. It's neither of which are on my property, town property. I haven't dug into it too deeply, but I'll venture to say if someone slips on a town-owned sidewalk in front of my house, my insurance is probably liable for it. Um, I understand in Rocky Hill, they take care of uh, replacing the sidewalks in Rocky Hill the town at the town expense. So I wonder... In Weathersfield, many miles of sidewalks, I wonder how many sidewalks are actually replaced every year and what kind of numbers we're talking about. Maybe there's a way that you can use tax assessments. There's a lot of houses that don't have any sidewalks. So maybe the tax money is available there to replace some sidewalks for other people. But just sharing that, it just doesn't seem to be fair and equitable that some people get their sidewalks replaced and others have to pay for it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Clinch, come on up. Jim Clinch, 903 Ridge Road. I, I wanted to know if the town manager looked into the um, little, you know, the uh, question that I had about the, um, uh, ta the tax abatement for veterans and the, the card that that's on the internet with the assessor and there's a space in there that says exemptions and it's left blank. Why, why is it left blank and not filled out what they, if a veteran has uh, exemption, it should be put in there. <laughs> I think I asked you that the last election. You said you were going to look into it. You, you can reply. 
uh, unfortunately, I have not looked into it yet. Yeah. The uh, second thing is the uh, Veterans Commission that um, you announced that you were any appointees that you had. Um, uh, I was the uh, appointments weren't really on a on a on, a, on an open basis. Uh, the the guy that got up and talked a little while at the at the beginning of the meeting, Rick Newell, he's probably one of the most decorated veterans in the town of Wethersfield. He's got two Purple Hearts. He served in Vietnam. Got two Purple Hearts. He's um, Agent Orange and Cancer is in Remission. And uh, I think uh, the the names that you come up with in the, in the, in the, and he's a, a, a strong advocate for uh, veterans. He's worked uh, for the DAV for many, many years. So I, I think when you announced these appointments, I think you didn't really dig down or ask for, you know, for uh, any open, openness when it came to uh, volunteers for the, in, at least the, in the veterans community, there was no acknowledgement of that you were looking for uh, qualified people to, to join the, uh, the committee. Thirdly, uh, you know, going back to many of you, uh, in fact, I know that the majority of you, were, probably only Dolores knows that back when Russ Moran was mayor, we had a, uh, a young man that was on, I think he was 20, 21 years old, and he was on the council. And he announced that he was uh, resigning and he was uh, joining the military. And uh, he got up and he made a speech. In fact, my daughter and I, we got the tape from it. We just got it recently in uh, the tape. Uh, and it was his speech and saying that uh, how he was so, uh, so, uh, he admired me so much about because of my advocacy for veterans that he joined the military, a Navy guy. I, I don't remember what his name was, but uh, he, uh, I think he's still in the Navy. He's probably been a veteran for many, or been a, uh, in, the, in the Navy for many years. So, I, I, you know, I think that there's many, many qualified people that, uh, that, are, that live in town that uh, you probably didn't know that existed. And you went ahead and made choices that I think uh, people in the veterans community think you know they should have had a, a little more input into it to to uh, because a veterans committee, as far as I'm concerned, is for an advocacy for veterans for whether it be uh, exemption exemptions from for veterans in the, in the town. Uh, service-connected disabilities, um, you know, many, many issues that I think that uh, people that are, at least, I don't know any, I, 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 the only one I know is Dan, and uh, I don't know if the others are qualified to sit on the Veterans Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clinch. Mr. Young? Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Before I get started, a half an hour ago, George Rue called and he mentioned that he could not hear this presentation. He could watch it. I mentioned it to Gail and she says it's playing, so. I don't know what the problem is. Anyway, I'm gonna pick up where I left off. Uh, as a concerned citizen without the assistance or privilege of having a paid subscription to a real estate record system, I went online searching for recent properties in the area that could be used as comparables to the, to the Keisha farm in order to determine if the $2.4 million was a fair price. I did some research on raw farm and comparable residential raw land, land in central Connecticut. 
After my review of recent sales and current properties on the market, I sum it up this way. The Keisha Farm will cost $75,000 an acre. 330 Bushy Hill Road, Manchester, sold in August of 2015 for $14,700 an acre. 174 Pigeon Hill Road, Windsor, Connecticut, sold in January of 2018 for $22,100 per acre. Chamberlain Lane, Glastonbury, sold in March of 2018 at $17,000 per acre. 698 Manson Hill Road, South Glastonbury, sold in April of 2017 for $33,900 per acre. And Old Maids Lane, Glastonbury, sold on December 2017 for $65,000 an acre. That $65,000 an acre was based on six acres. It was adjacent to one of their properties, and the picture on the internet was as flat as a pancake, as green as green could be, and it was a beautiful field, not compared anywhere to your rock pile you have up on Collier Road and Highland Street. Anyway, the average price of these five properties is $30,665,000 per acre. You're paying $75,000 per acre. And Mr. Forrest at the, one of those meetings says that he believed that the $2.4 million was a fair market value. I think, Mr. Forrest, you, you need to go back and think about that again, because I think you put the people of Wethersfield back owning something that's worth a hell of a lot less than what we're going to pay for it. I believe that the Keisha Farm at the low end is approximately, and I looked at those six different properties. One property, the high property had 95 acres, the low property had 5.3 acres. And it comes out to an average, the low side would be 600,000 and no higher than $978,000 is all that property would be worth based on these comparables. Now, as I go on, there's properties that are currently on the market. I sent all this stuff to you folks. I know the people, uh, I probably sent out thousands of emails to people in Wethersfield the day I sent this to you folks. Maybe that's why we got 5,000 people who voted no. Dickinson Road in Glastonbury, a 64-acre parcel is on the market for $950,000. It's on the market, 64 acres. Main Street, uh, five. 82 Main Street, Glastonbury, 41 acres, is on the market for $700,000. 1925 New London Turnpike in Glastonbury, 35 acres, is on the market for $700,000. You can find us on that link that I gave you guys. It's all right there. It'll take you right to those properties. Higby Road, Middletown, beautiful piece of farmland. 41 acres for $700,000. Ridgewood Road, another one in Middletown, only 16 acres for $450,000. Must be a premium piece of property. But we're, we're going to pay, we're going to pay double and triple what these properties are worth, they are on the market for. And as I say, these six were sold your people should have been looking at those properties long before you negotiated, and they must have. But they, hey, definitely, did, they definitely did not look out for the best interest of the people of Wethersfield. And I do want that appraisal, madam, Miss Thank Manager. You. I really want that appraisal. I want to look that over. Thank you, Mr. Young. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Okay, seeing none, we will 
Um, we have an executive session, so I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. Motion to go into an executive session. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Happy Thanksgiving, all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio.